Hello, I'm Dan Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about Hyperledger Avalon application development, specifically workload um, application development. Workload is uh, is a worker that executes inside an enclave and takes and processes requests. So, to to do this, um, you need to set up and have Avalon already installed, um, and to do, you could go to the source repository at github.com slash hyperledger slash Avalon. And there's build instructions. Um, you could build in standalone mode or with Docker. It's a lot easier to build with Docker. Um, and that's what I recommend doing at least for the first time and because there's a lot fewer steps involved. But this tutorial could be done either way. And in this, this case, I'll show how to do it with Docker. So to start out, we go to documentation at the page there, and we click on workload tutorial. OK. So the what we will be doing is um, uh, this tutorial is in three parts. The first part, we just create a generic skeleton that does nothing but return a mes message. A skeleton worker just returns a message back to the requester or client. The second part is where we enhance it and we have it return a string sent by the requester. So it's a kind of a simple hello world program that just echoes back a string you send it. And the third part is where we be, we're a little bit more sophisticated and we use um, the inside out API where you could access files from outside the, the um, TEE or S Intel SGX enclave. So the first part is what we'll be doing right now is just um, creating a skeleton. So we go down and follow the instructions, prereqs. Um, well, first we look at the workload processor.h. That's the header file used by the um, worker application. So let's say class called workload processor, and you pass it the, the several things, the workload ID, ID for the requester, um, worker ID, which was returned from a directory lookup earlier. Um, and your data. We have two macros in this header file. This first macro you put in your header file, um, your application header file, call it info workload processor clone, and you give it the, the name of the workload processor. Then we have another um, macro that's used in your source value, your .cpp source, called register workload processor, which registers instance of this worker. So let's go back to the tutorial. Um, and this is, uh, um, just is what I just explained to you, where we have um, a header file with these two macros in it. Then we review the generic command line client. We have a generic client called generic client.py written in Python. And that works with any or most um, Avalon workers. It sends it is a stream and it re receives a stream. Um, and of course, the string is could be more sophisticated than just a simple string. It could be um, you could use, for example, JSON or Cbor or Protobufs or whatever, and encode it in Base64 and send send that as a string. If you want to be um, more sophisticated and use binary, you can. You just can't use this generic client. This generic client just sends and receives ASCII text. And it's intended for a quick um, application development, quick startup here. So you may want or probably will want a more sophisticated client later. And it could be in, in JavaScript or another language um, besides Python. Going back to the tutorial. So we reviewed these two things, the header file and our generic client. 
and you also need to review how to build Avalon. I, I kind of assume you already installed and built Avalon before this tutorial. So phase one, that's just creating this generic client that does nothing. Um, let's see, let's change to T TCF Home. TCF Home is where you installed Avalon. Um, that's basically a clone of the Avalon repository. So I make a new directory and change to it. That's the directory where our workload application is going to be. And of course, it starts out with nothing. Let's populate it with some template files. So now we have template files, a make file, a logic and plugin file. The, the logic contains your work, worker specific logic. And the plugin is kind of like the interface between Avalon and your, and your worker. So we try to separate the two here. So let's um, edit these, um, this, these generic template files and to make it specific, we're gonna call our worker hello world. So first we edit plugin.h and we change namespace in two non-commented locations to hello world. That's the name of our namespace. That's easy. And we change workload ID to the name of our workload ID. This is a string. Um, in our case, we'll call it hello dash world, not hello underscore world. We call it the idea is hello dash world. Hello dash world. This is one spot to do that, one location. <clears throat> then we edit enough another file. Let's write it. We edit file um, cmakelist.txt in the current directory. So this make file just tells us how to make these files here, but it also needs to know the name. So we change um, workload static name to what? Hello world, except not there. We change it there in this line. And that's it for this directory. Now we got to tell uh, make to build this worker too, in addition to all the other workers. So we need to append a line to this file. So we edit this file here, TCF home, examples, apps, cmakelist.txt. Okay, let's uncomment this and change this workload static name to hello world, hello underscore world workload, which is actually a name of this directory here. And we also, besides building these files, we also need to link it in to the rest of Avalon. Um, in the future, this is, will be um, dynamically linked, but right now it's statically linked. So we edit this make file, make list.txt file under TCSGX Trusted Worker Manager Enclave. Okay, we're going to comment these two lines. And change, let's see, workload static name to hello underscore world. And this is just the directory name. So, and 
I think we're done. So next we go to the top level directory, TCF home. and build it. So for Avalon, we go to the build.md instructions. Let's go to Docker base builds. We run this Docker compose up dash dash build. And let's hope I did not make a syntax error. If I did, don't worry, the compiler will tell me. So this is building all of Avalon, but most of it's already built. So it should not take too long. If you're building completely from scratch, it's, it should take about, takes me about 11 minutes using Docker. There, hello world. You see it being built right now. There. And I didn't see any syntax error, so that's kind of good. Those are just warnings. Okay, now it's building an Avon listener who listens to requests from the requester or client. Building an Avalon shell, that's a container um, that we use to run our or client or requester in Docker. Okay, so now it looks like it's it's done. When you start seeing that message sleeping for 10 seconds, it's running and waiting for a request. So let's start our shell here. That's actually let's go back to the tutorial. So Yeah, here shows us to run the shell. We'll do that in another window here. Let's change to TCF home. Actually, you should, actually for the running shell, it doesn't matter what directory you're in. <clears throat> okay, um, I need to update these instructions and by the time you listen to this, it will be updated, but these, this is how you run it from standalone mode without Docker. So to run it with Docker, you need to add, a, add the URI of the, of the listener container. That is dash dash URI HTTP colon slash slash Avalon listener colon 1947. 1947 is the, is the port where listener listens to. By default, the URI is localhost colon 1947. But since we're using containers, we have to specify um, where the container is. Um, so in this example, we send two workloads, Jane and Dan. 
or two requests actually. Let's copy that, paste it. So the client sends a request and it first um, looks up a work for a worker, sends a request to the worker, waits for the response and gets the response. And what response do we get? It is error under construction. So that's what our skeleton does. It just receives a request and returns a message under construction. So that concludes the first part of this tutorial. The second part, we will change this application to instead of just saying return error message, it will echo back the string that you sent it. It's, it's, in other words, it's a simple hello world application. Hello, I'm Dan Anderson, and this is part two of our application development tutorial. Where we, um, with part one, we took and created just a very generic skeleton worker that did nothing but respond to a request with the error message. So now we're going to enhance this worker to echo back the input text um, back to the application or requester. So we go to our workload tutorial and let's scroll down to part two, phase two. Let's change to the directory we created in phase one. So we have these files on um, the logic, which is the um, worker code and a plugin, which is the interface between the worker and Av Hyperledger Avalon. So, okay, first thing is we edit logic.h. And we add this definition to it um, right here. Then we edit the C file, logic.cpp, c.cpp, actually a C++ file. And add this simple function. So this is a worker logic. It's very simple, but we're trying to illustrate the, the interface and API, not your complex um, worker logic, which you already know how to do. So to keep this, Demo simple, we just echo back the string we that was input and prepended with the word hello. So if you send it Dan, my name, it would return hello Dan, for example. Very simple processor, but again, we're just illustrating the, the API here. So now we um, modify the plugin. This is the interface between your worker and Avalon. Except you need to, I need to spell it correctly, CPP. <clears throat> so look for process, work order, there it is right there. Okay, so replace this, these lines of code, these three lines with this. And so I replace this dummy error message with this for loop and this for loop um, for each work order data it receives that um, calls process hello world and, and it appends the output to it. So you, this allows multiple work orders um, per request. We'll Efficiency there. Just paste it in there. Let's indent it nice here. There. So this plugins uh, CPP calls process hello world. 
in logic CPP right here. So we have four files here. Okay, so now we re rebuild it. Now you could do this in standalone or in Docker mode. I'm following the instructions of build MD here. But we're doing Docker base. So again, we run Docker up, Docker compose up a minus minus build. We already terminated the, the Avalon previously by just typing control C. So now we need to rest rebuild and restart it. So let's go to top level directory, TCF home, and run this. Although actually, since it's running in containers, actually you need to be in this directory so it knows where the what where the Docker compose files are. So you need to be in the top level um, TCF underscore home. <clears throat> okay, we run this you do. Docker compose up. If you're not rebuilding, you, you could omit the minus minus build option. And you could even run with this option, pass make clean zero to it. And that'll make it run faster, skip rebuilding, but we need to do the build because we need changes to the source. So let's run Docker compose up build. First it builds the LMDB which is a, has a, just a key value store for Avalon. Enclave manager. So that manages the enclaves, the workers, which execute inside a TEE enclave. Building all the apps here, Simple Wallet, Heart Disease, and our favorite Hello World app. I didn't see any errors, so that's good. Um, always nice to have a demo where that works, although we're not done yet. Let's go back to our tutorial while we're waiting to build. So this is the command we send to the worker using our generic client. So we we have the workload ID, which is hello-world, that identifies what worker you want. Uh, you gotta give the location of the Avalon listener. We need to change um, a localhost to um, Avalon-listener. That's the container name because we're running um, with Docker containers. Now these red messages, they're just warnings there. We have a few warnings in the build. Something to do with um, class or scope names being hidden, I believe. Kind of obscure errors <clears throat> or warnings. Okay, built the Enclave Manager. Now it's building in a listener. So the listener listens to requests using a JSON RPC and sends it on to <clears throat> the appropriate worker. I'm setting up some cont Docker containers here. So the Docker container, we want to run the bash or shell container here. So let's get ready for this. Paste this in. First, we need to wait for the build to finish. <clears throat> okay, the, the 
gRPCIO, which is the RPC Python stuff, takes a while to set up and download. So I stopped recording. But anyway, that finished. It's continuing. Let's resume execution here. So it just started Avalon there. So we see the Enclave Manager, LMDB, and Listener all running different enclaves. So we have another shell here where I'm going to enter the Docker shell to run our client application. Which is, <clears throat> okay, so we, okay, the documentation shows the command line to run. Um, since we're running Docker containers, that we need to add a minus minus URI parameter. I'm going to update this documentation here to, uh, to give you the exact command line parameters, but here it is copied to a clipboard here. So we call generic client, pass it to the URI of where the listener is, which is on the Avalon dash listener container for TCP port 1947. Minus O option specifies decrypt the output and display it back. Um, then the workload ID is our worker, which we call hello dash world. And the data we give it is two names here. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, it sends a request and they, it looks up a worker, returns a worker ID information, location. You then it sends a request to the worker, which of a response and it gets a response back. And what are responses? Hello, Jane and hello, Dan. So this, this hello world application works. So you could run it again. You could give it any other name you want. Let's say, hello, Alice. So, listener, so work order response, and the result. Here's the result here that we get back. It's um, base64 encoded uh, and encrypted. And so if you use minus O option, you get the decrypted version, which is just this right here. Hello, Alice. So that concludes this part of the demo. And then now we stop the, the Avalon components with just a control C. Hello, today we are going to uh, talk about and go over part three of the tutorial. Uh, part three is where we um, <clears throat> enhance our example Hello World application to use some inside out IO. Inside out IO refers to the ability to read files outside the, the SGX or Intel SGX or TE Enclave and read and, and write files from outside the enclave while you're inside. So first we go to the source repository, github.com hyperledger slash Avalon. And we click on docs and workload tutorial. And I have updated copy right here. We go to phase three, which is the, the IO operations. So let's see, we start by changing to this directory. Okay, first we add a line to the make file. We're adding a 
include directory for the uh, crypto header files. We're going to be doing some crypto. We're going to encrypt and decrypt the files that we're uh, writing and, and reading. Next, we copy some helper files that do the inside I.O. So before we just have the logic and plugin files and make file that we had before from phase two. And now we have two additional files, ilhelper.h and .cpp. So let's look at the files here. Let's look at CPP. It implements a class called IL helper. We have a generate key function. It's a key read file. It reads a file, then decrypts it, and write file, where it, it encrypts the file, then writes it, and a delete file. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's add to logic.cpp. Again, logic is, is your worker application code and plugin is the interface between the worker code and Avalon. So we're mainly just dealing with logic, enhancing that. Okay, we need to add a, see before it was just a very simple hello and, and your input string. Let's add a header file and a definition. Let's look, let's look at that header file. So it just defines that class IL helper we saw before. Okay, we also modify process hello world, which we created and modified from uh, phase two. So we replace this function basically. With this. Then we, then we add a new function, get count or key, which reads a count in the file, or the first time it's called, it returns a encryption key for the file. Okay, next. Okay, this step actually belongs after after the after you start Avalon. We'll do that later. So let's rebuild Avalon here. C D to TCF home. And that refers to the top level directory of the source repository. And you define that uh, usually in your, your home dot bash RC file. It's just regular Avalon repository, and we, um, we're running, um, we're gonna try this with Docker. So we're gonna, to build it, we just run Docker compose up minus minus build. Let's see if I could find it in my history. There it is. Starts out by building LMDB and all the other Avalon components. Enclave Manager later builds all the um, containers. I'm gonna stop sharing this because it, stop recording it because this takes a few minutes to um, run. <clears throat> okay, the, the 
build is almost finished. There's one thing I forgot though, is in logic.h, you need to add, add this new function that we added in logic.cpp. Okay, now it started here. When we start seeing the sleeping for 10 second message, it's all the components have started. So let's first off make our directory to hold our, our files. We're running Docker, so we need to do this inside of it. The Avalon Enclave Manager container. So we start with empty directory temp tutorial. We start another Docker shell to run our client application. So we run our generic client um, and we have to specify the Avalon listener container is where location at Avalon listener at port 1947. And our end data is Jack, that's the name of our user. So it submits a request and we should get back a key that Jack could use. Okay, so this big number here is a key. So let's copy it. First, uh, let's go back to temp tutorial and let's see what's there in that container. Oh, there's a file, Jack, what's inside? And then just um, base64 encrypted string there. So let's um, send our second request. Pan jack colon and the key. This is a primitive interface. It's basically we're just sending a string, and in this case it happens to be comma separated values or colon separated, but it doesn't matter. You could use portal buffs, um, um, CBOR, um, anything you want, any, any encoding method, it's up to your application. So we send Jack and the name of the key as a request. So it updated the file before it had a one in it. Now it has a two, although it's encrypted. Let's look at our file again. See, the contents are different there. Let's just run it one more time, just for fun. Send a work order, gets a response, this time it's three. So that concludes our tutorial. And um, you could review it under the hyperledger.org slash Avalon slash docs slash workload tutorial. And also I would take a look at, if you're gonna do some application development, I would also look at the reference manuals and other documentation under the docs directory. We typed control C to stop the container and all the other containers also stop. So thank you for listening.